Agency TV 18, celebrating 15 years of leadership. And welcome to the CNBC TV 18 special. I'm Shireen Bhan, and we're in conversation with the man who's steering forward the newest airline to hit the Indian skies, Vistara. Uh, Ptech, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Uh, you know, we talked uh, to you when you decided to actually launch the brand, and you told us why you chose the name Vistara, and it's Sanskrit, which means limitless, and that's that's hopefully going to be your experience in the Indian market. So, give us a sense of what the experience has been so far of being able to put Vistara together. Well, it has been. Uh, uh a long and arduous journey, yet uh, it's been exciting, you know. There's never been a single dull moment from the day I stepped for, uh, my foot in uh, India on 1st December. Yes, I uh, just kept uh, one year in India. Uh, it's been exciting because uh, there's, there was lots of ups and downs uh, throughout this journey. More downs than ups? Uh, well, I wouldn't say so because if there are more downs than ups, we wouldn't be where we are today. Uh, you know, let me ask you in terms of... Uh, of being able to put this entire um, new airline together and, and you know I remember you saying that you're here to redefine full service carriers both in terms of service and operational experience. Explain to us what that means because there's a lot of skepticism uh, whether a full service carrier can really work in India given the fact that the market has moved completely towards low fare airlines is probably a myth in this country at this point in time but towards low cost airlines. Uh, do you believe that you are going to be able to deliver on the full service experience and yet be profitable? You know, let me ask you a question. You know, do you drive your car looking at the rear view mirror all the time? No. No. You got to look forward, yeah. right? So, you know, and looking forward is the approach we have taken with regards to entering this market. If we were to focus on a lot of the uh, news that's out there in the market about the market, nobody dares to set foot in India, mm -hmm. where the aviation business is concerned. You know, we talk about a lot of airlines are struggling to make ends meet. You know, uh, there's a, a, a lot of passengers are price sensitive, not willing to pay more. Mm. Right, and that is because of the situation that has been and is right now. We carried out an intensive uh, consumer research. You know, delving into uh, their experience <coughs> uh, in the uh, aviation market, in the airport, on flight, uh, delving into uh, what their latent and overt needs are, what their pain points, what the need gaps are. And it is interesting, at the end of the, the research, mm. uh, we realize there's a vast potential that's yet to be tapped. Okay. The survey tells us that a lot of passengers feel that they've been treated just like a number. Mm. There's a loss of individuality. Mm. The entire flight experience or the airport experience is pretty much like a transaction. They just are being pushed from one end to another, yeah. A to B, yeah. and there's no personalization. Everyone is treated the same. It's like the massification of travel. Yeah. Yeah. So, so from this survey, mm. it gives us, uh, you know, uh, uh, a great hope mm. that there's a, a void that Vistara can step into and to, uh, to, to restore the trust. There, there is a prevailing trust deficit in this country. Yeah. And this is what we want to correct eventually when we start to take up the sky. A couple of interesting things that you say. I want to ask you the learnings from your survey and the fact that you want to move away from massification to offering personalized services and making the customer feel as if you know he's being treated as an individual and not a number. What is that actually going to mean in terms of your service offering? It looks great. It sounds great when a CEO talks about it. But what is it going to mean for a consumer who's actually going to board a Vistara flight? How will you ensure that I'm not treated just as a number? You know, our service philosophy will be centered around Atiti Devo Bhava. Mm. Uh, a phrase I used at the brand launch yeah. not too long ago. The guest is our God. Our staff and our customer service uh, agents, our partners, will all be trained to be preemptive, to be anticipatory to the needs of the customers. We will not be just fo focusing on the function itself. Yes, you know, at the check-in, there mm -hmm. is a process, a steps that has to go through. But there is also the service elements that has to come hand in glove 
with the function that one has to execute. But isn't it this is, what all airlines or everybody in the hospitality business aspires to do? It's a different matter whether they actually uh, are able to execute that to perfection, but isn't this what everyone in the hospitality, the service business aspires to do? I think the, you just you know, answer the question yourself. Aspiration versus execution. Hmm. We aim to execute this consistently, number one. How will you ensure execution? Through training, through methodology, through the use of technology where we uh, avoid dependence, you know, on the human factor okay. where it's possible. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we, we, br we bring the wealth of experience from Singapore Airlines, the way we train with the way Singapore Airlines trains their crew mm. to deliver the exemplary service that even other airlines talk about. So it is a goodness that, you know, it, you know this, this is a marriage made in heaven. We are drawing the, harnessing the best practices from both iconic brands, right. the legendary hospitality of Tata and the service excellence of Singapore Airlines to bring to bear on the way we conduct the training to ensure how at the end of the day, each and every of our staff Mm. who interacts with the customers, not necessarily just on the air through the cabin crew, but also at every cu customer touch points, how we can bring about mm. the personalized and the seamless experience that every uh, uh, traveler in India mm. craves. How have you been able to marry what Singapore Airlines brings to the table as far as service excellence is concerned and what the Tata's bring uh, to the table in terms of hospitality uh, in India? How do I bring about both uh, yeah how have you been able to marry that for, for the purpose of Vistara? Um, for one we, we bring about uh, the uh, the best of both uh, brands in the way we uh, train our staff prepare our staff um, not just in the way of customer delivery of uh, ser uh, customer service but also in the way we craft out the processes mm. um, in the in the way we leverage on technology mm. yeah. Okay, let me ask you this because you talked about how Vistara is going to be all about personalized service. You've also said that we will provide value-added services. So in a sense, you're saying that the customer pay for what he wants to or she wants to use. Uh, you know, we've already seen airlines going that route because now it's allowed by the regulator. So you charge for whether it's excess baggage or so on and so forth. What are the services uh, besides, of course, in-flight entertainment and food that customers can, can enjoy on a Vistara? Of flight if they want to pay for it, if they choose to pay for it. No, we are not asking our passengers to pay for everything. We are going to be a full service carrier. So a lot of the product and services will be offered in to built them into, be, into, in into, built into the, prices, the ticket yeah. prices. Yeah. Right? Um, and at the end of the day, our pricing will be uh, um, value for money. Mm. Yeah. But you know, it's a sensitive market, it's a price sensitive market and, and, and you may say that we're going to treat you not as a number but as an individual, it's going to be a much more personalized experience, we'll use the power of technology and service excellence and so on and so forth. But what is the price sensitivity analysis telling you? And I'm sure you've done enough research on that as well. You know, price sensitivity again, you know, is what we got to know about the market based on the past experience. The experience we are going to bring into the market has never been uh, seen before. What's going to be so different? Just give me a glimpse of what's going to be so different. For one, as we say, we are going to make them feel that they are personal, that there's a personal touch to the customer uh, experience at every touch point. We are also going to make sure that the experience is not just in the air, that mm. is going to differentiate ourselves from the rest. Mm. It will be an end-to-end -end seamless experience okay. from the, the moment they get into contact with us the moment they make a booking with us right. till the moment they leave the airport for their final destination mm. it will be an end-to-end -end seamless and personal customer experience okay not just what is in the air so you know that's as far as the front end is concerned and right. we'll, we'll uh, you know the proof of the pudding is going to be in the eating but let me talk to you about the back end because there is only so much that you can actually control in terms of what happens as far as ATF prices are concerned and there's good news on that front today yes. so you've got the benefit uh, you've actually got crude prices falling so that's a gift in a sense for an airline that, that's just starting up because you don't have the legacy of debt which other carriers at this point in time have to deal with uh, so besides uh, the fact that ATF is not going to be in your control. What are the other costs that you're going to be able to control uh, to align the front-end experience with your back-end infrastructure efficiency so that you can actually be profitable? I think you are right, you know, uh, cost leadership 
is paramount and we have recognized this right from the start. You know, it, it has to be one of our key plank uh, uh, of strategy to uh, ensure uh, the sustainability, survivability of this airline. Cost leadership is a must given the high cost of operation in India. Yes, you mentioned about good uh, positive movements in terms of uh, the ATF uh, uh, taxes uh, will be coming down soon, hopefully not too long. Mm. Uh, there are other areas whereby we can uh, manage our cost uh, or can control the cost, right? Uh, with the exception of the fuel price, right? There are other elements in terms of the operational cost, yeah. right? And this is where we can bring, you know, the experience from the Singapore Airlines, the technical competency mm. and the operational excellence from Singapore Airlines to manage that aspect of the cost better. Okay. Right? Um, there is also the uh, uh, areas of uh, um, organizational cost, whereby we have uh, envisaged we're going to keep and maintain a very lean and mean team mm -hmm. to run the operations. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why until uh, today we still are working in a temporary business center uh, where we can cut costs, we will, but as long as it's not customer fronting. So a full service carrier at the front end but frugal at the back end. We are going to be a full service carrier with a low cost carrier's cost structure. CNBC TV 18, celebrating 15 years of leadership.